We have a responsibility to provide our diplomats with the resources and support they need to do their jobs as safely and effectively as possible. In 2011, during the revolution, uh, then envoy um, Stevens had 10 agents with him on the ground uh, in Benghazi. And then we know in 2012, where the security situation had deteriorated even further, um, there were only three agents assigned to Benghazi. Again, in 2011, 10, and when an ambassador was there, three, and he brought two of his own the night of the attack, which would meet the requisite five, but there was really only three there at any given time. So if you could address that, again, I'm running a little short on time. Well, he did have five with him on uh, September 11th, and... Well, he that, brought two, right? He brought two well, with him. There were three there, and there right, were supposed but, to be but five the, there. But the point was they were personal security, so they were there to secure him. So yes, he did bring two, and when he got there, he had five. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to in any way suggest that uh, he, he or the embassy got everything they requested. We know that they didn't from the Accountability Review Board, from uh, investigations that were done by the Congress. And we'll certainly never know what would have what the outcome would have been if there had been more agents that night. I yield Well, back. that's not what the professionals, that's not what the experts in security have concluded. If you read the Accountability Review Board. I have read it, Secretary Clinton, and it says that security was grossly inadequate. Well, it said that there were deficiencies within two bureaus in the State Department, which we have moved to uh, correct. Another email from the Ops Center that was forwarded to you from Ms. Abedin on Sunday, April 10th. So he had been there about five days. And it indicates that the situation in Ajitabaya had worsened to the point where Stevens is considering departing from Benghazi. This is within five days of him going in. Were you aware of that concern within the first five days that he had gone in? Yeah. And did anyone share that with you? And yes. And did share that with we you? We were aware because we were, we were really counting on Chris to uh, guide us. Did you ever personally speak to him after you swore him in in May? Yes I believe, or no, please? Yes, I believe I did. But and when I, was that? I, I don't recall, and I want to clarify for the record that this document is about all of Libya, not just Benghazi. Absolutely. I don't want anybody no, 77 to be misled. Or about Benghazi. And, you know, Congresswoman, I, I, look, I appreciate, and, and I really do, the, the passion and the intensity of your feelings about this. We have diplomatic facilities in war zones. We have ambassadors that we send to places that have been bombed and attacked all the time. And you're and their boss, I, is that you're right. correct? You're right, I am. You're and their we, leader, is that correct? Are there situations where you recall, and I'd like to know what the conversation was with Ambassador Stevens and what month it was with Ambassador Stevens, because there are no call logs with him. There's nothing from the op center with him that we have found. We have no record that you had any conversations with the ambassador after you swore him in and before he died, and you were his boss. I was the boss of ambassadors in 270 countries. Sitting here in the comfort of this large, beautiful hearing room, it's easy to say, well, there should have been. Somebody should have stood up and said, do that. But that was not the case. We do and have done uh, the best we can. Everyone who knew him, everyone who worked with him, including Libyans, as I said at the very beginning, um, would have given anything uh, to prevent this from happening. Um, our security professionals usually, in fact, more than 99 plus percent of the time get it right. And Madam Secretary, if we would have given anything, <clears throat> had you talked to him in July, he would have told you that he had asked to keep the security in Libya that he had. He was told no by your State Department. We didn't give him everything. Thank you. I yield back. Jill lays out of town, the witness may answer the question if she'd like to. Well, it's the same answer I've been giving all day. All right. Chris Stevens had an opportunity to reach me directly any time he thought there was something of importance. The people with whom he worked, the people who were around him and with him, uh, they very well understood the dangers that they were confronting. And they did the best they could under the circumstances. And many of the security requests, as I just detailed, were 
um, agreed to, others weren't. So we, Ambassador Stevens didn't have your email, is that correct? Your personal email? I'm sorry, what did you ask me? Ambassador Stevens did not have your personal email address. We've established that. Yes, that's right. Did he have your cell phone number? No, but he had the 24-hour number of the state operations uh, in that, the State Department that can reach me 24-7. Yes, ma'am. Uh, did he have your fax number? He had the fax number of the State Department. In 1998, here's what the ARB said. It said, quote, the Secretary of State should personally review the security situation of embassy chanceries and other official premises, closing those which are highly vulnerable and threatened, end of quote. You've told us all day today that you don't think you should have been involved, and I'm quoting again from the ARB, personally reviewing security. Madam Secretary, this is yes or no question. Do you think you complied with what the ARB in 1998 said and personally reviewed the security at Benghazi? Well, that's, that, that is not what my understanding of the 1998 no, it's just words, Secretary. They're right there. Well, and I just answered. I personally reviewed security situations of chanceries and other official facilities that were recommended because they were highly vulnerable and threatened to be closed. And we closed some. Here's another one from the 1998 ARB. Quote, first and foremost, the Secretary should take a personal and active role in carrying out the responsibility ensuring the security U.S. diplomatic personnel abroad. Do you believe you complied with that requirement from the 1998 ARB? Yes, I do. I believe that I had established uh, a, uh, a process, and I, you know, I said earlier today, uh, State Department and our security professionals have to be 100 percent uh, right, and I think that uh, you know, what happened in Benghazi was uh, a tragedy. I hope you can understand the difference between creating a deputy under assistant secretary and America's senior diplomat getting involved in personal security. The amount of resources that can be moved, the speed at with which they will move, rested only in your hands. Well, I've, I just I've respectfully disagree myself. with that, Congressman. It's been my experience that you want to find people who are dedicated 100% to security. You don't want a secretary or anyone dipping in and out, maybe making decisions based on factors other than what the professionals decide. Do you know how many uh, security requests there were in the first quarter of 2012? For everyone or for Benghazi? It, for, I'm sorry, yes ma'am. Uh, related to Benghazi and Libya, do you know how many there were? No, I do not know. Ma'am, there were just over 100 plus. In the second quarter, do you know how many there were? No, I do not. Ma'am, there were 172-ish. Might have been 171 or 173. That's how many were there in July and August, and then in that week and a few days before the attacks? Do you know? There were a number of them. I know yes, that. Yes, ma'am. 83 mm -hmm. by our count. That's over 600 requests. You've testified here this morning that you had none of those reach your desk. Is that correct? Also. That's correct. That's what all of us want to know. What did you do? And what decisions did you make? And you said everybody else is responsible for everything else. What were you responsible for? I was responsible for sending Chris Stevens to Benghazi as an envoy. I was responsible for supporting a temporary uh, mission uh, that we were constantly evaluating to determine whether it should become permanent in Benghazi. I was responsible for uh, recommending Chris Stevens to be the ambassador. I was responsible for working on the policy uh, both before and after uh, the, uh, the uh, end of the Gaddafi regime. I was responsible for quite a bit, Congressman. I was not responsible for specific security requests and decisions. That is not something I was responsible for. If you talk to the CIA uh, contractors that were at the annex and you ask them how they were armed and equipped, and then if you would or could, talk to the diplomatic security agents that were at the facility, I think you will see that there was a big, big difference in the equipment that they had to protect their self. But you knew of the two, what you call major incidents, but you don't recollect the other uh, 18 that Mr. Morrell says happened. How many instances would it have taken you to say, hey, we need to look at the security over there. Would it have been three major instances, 30 instances, 40 instances, 50 instances? How many instances would you have been made aware of that would have made you say, 
hey, I don't care what anybody else says. We're going to protect our people. Chris Stevens is a good friend of mine. We're going to look after him. How many would it have taken? Well, con Congressman, of course, I made it abundantly clear that we had to do everything we could to protect our people. What I did not and do not believe any secretary should do was to substitute my judgment from thousands of miles away for the judgment of the security professionals who made the decisions about what kind of security would be um, provided. Of course, I was ultimately responsible for security. I took responsibility for what happened in Benghazi. What, what does that point? mean when you say what? I took responsibility? When Mr. When Westmoreland asked you that question, you said, what, contracting and so forth? So when you say you're responsible for something, Madam Secretary, what does that mean? If you're responsible, what, what, what action would you have done differently? What, what do you own as a result of this? So far, I've heard, since we've been together today, I've heard one dismissive thing after another. It was this group. It was that group. I wasn't served by this. I wasn't served by that. What did you do? What do you own? Well, I was just telling you some of the many uh, related issues I was working on to try to help the Libyan people uh, make... What's your responsibility to Benghazi? That's my question. Well, my responsibility was to be uh, briefed and to discuss with the uh, security experts and the policy experts uh, whether we would have a post in Benghazi, whether we would continue it, whether we would make it permanent. And as I've said repeatedly throughout the day, no one ever recommended closing the post in Benghazi. No one recommended closing, but you had two ambassadors that made several, several requests. And here's basically what happened to their requests. They were torn up. Well, they that's just not true, Congressman. Oh, I, I know Secretary, that's Secretary, they didn't get through. It didn't help them. Were those responded to? Is that your testimony today? Many were responded to. There were affirmative responses to a number of requests for additional security. And you laid security. this on Chris Stevens, didn't In you? Both. Because he said, you said earlier, he knows where to pull the levers. So aren't you implying that it's his responsibility to figure out how he's supposed to be secure because Chris Stevens knows how to pull the levers? Is that your testimony? Ambassadors are the ones who pass on security uh, recommendations and requests. That's true throughout the world. And when they he does, do, and they're they too and they're rely not on their security to, what's professionals. His, what's his remedy if they're not responded to? What's his remedy if it's no? As I testified earlier, he was in regular email contact with um, some of my closest advisors. So hit he, resend, was in, is that it? he was in regular email contact and cable contact with the another The cables didn't get through. You created an environment, Madam Secretary, where the cables couldn't get through. Now. Well, that, that, is, that is inaccurate. Cables, as we have testified and as they I They didn't get through to you. They didn't break into your inner circle. That was your testimony earlier. You can't have it both ways. You can't say all this information came in to me and I was able to process it, and yet it all it all stops at the security professionals. Well, that's not what attention. I, that's, Congressman, that's not what I was saying. I think we've tried to clarify that, you know, millions of cables come in, they're, uh, they're processed and sent to the appropriate uh, uh, offices and personnel with respect to they specific... They didn't get through. They didn't make any difference. They couldn't break into the inner circle of decision-making.